In this experiment, we're going to look at the dehydration of ethanol to form ethene gas. Dehydration is the removal of the elements of water, that is, removing two hydrogens and an oxygen, which in the end of the reaction become water. In the case of ethanol becoming ethene, this leads to the formation of a double bond, and we'll also look at the chemical test for a double bond, or a chemical test for unsaturation. The first thing to do is to get some ethanol into a boiling tube. Now, as the boiling tube has got to be placed horizontal, we're putting some mineral wool or some glass wool to act as a reservoir for the liquid into the bottom of the tube, and then we're sliding in the catalyst. The catalysts here are aluminium ions in the form of aluminium oxide. Now, aluminium oxide powder can be substituted for porcelain. There's enough aluminium in broken pieces of porcelain dishes that you might use for recrystallization to do this reaction. You'll notice that some delivery tubes have already been placed in a trough of water and the tubes themselves have been filled with water to collect the gas. Initially the catalyst is heated. Catalysts of course speed up a chemical reaction without getting used up and if you warm up the catalyst it increases the rate of reaction further. Ignoring the first few bubbles of gas coming off, because that will simply be expanded air, the ethene gas can be collected by the downward displacement of water. And once we've got three or four tubes of the gas collected, we can then do some further testing. There are three standard tests for ethene. One is its combustion, Second is to use bromine water to show the presence of a double bond, a test for unsaturation. And thirdly, the use of acidified potassium manganate 7, potassium permanganate, also as a test for unsaturation. In the combustion of ethene, a flame is simply put at the end of the tube and allowed to burn. Ethene gas is not particularly dense, so the gas is lit with the open end of the tube downwards and then brought to the horizontal so that it will burn slowly down the tube. As it burns it pulls more air in and the, the combustion continues. As you can see a yellow flame, this is of course incomplete combustion. In the case of potassium permanganate 7, the the solution is first acidified with dilute sulfuric acid, not hydrochloric acid because that would produce chlorine gas. What we've done here is deliberately add a too concentrated solution of potassium manganate 7 and too large a volume to show you that the colour change will not go from purple to colourless it will actually fade the colour of the purple, showing a reaction has taken place. But we've done this to show a typical error that somebody might do in not reading instructions correctly. To do this properly, you would need to add just a few drops of very dilute potassium manganate 7 solution, and the colour changes from purple to colourless. Acidified potassium manganate 7 is an oxidising agent, but here it simply adds an OH and alcohol group to both carbons either side of the double bond, making a diol, ethan-1,2-diol, which happens to be used in antifreeze. In the test with bromine water, bromine water itself is bromine, a very toxic material, dissolved in water. You simply add a few drops of bromine water to the gas, shake it up, and the decolorizing reaction shows there's a double bond present. The color of the bromine water gets used up. Now the active ingredient in bromine water isn't bromine as its name would suggest, but is the HOBR molecule.